Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I want to talk about this, probably the best $20 computer peripheral I have ever bought. This thing is a jack of all trades video capture card. I'm just going to show you the different things you can do with it. The first one, using your iPad as a portable monitor for your Mac Mini, so it's the only monitor that you're using. And what's cool about this is all you need is an HDMI cable, this, and a third-party app that you get on the App Store for free called MoneyCon. And once you boot up your Mini, you can see it through the app. You log into your Mac, and then you switch to Sidecar, and boom, you no longer need this, you need it attached, but you're not using this to view the mini on the iPad anymore. You're just using it to switch to Sidecar. And that's what makes this really awesome because Sidecar looks amazing. You get to use the full iPad screen. Not only that, you can use an Apple Pencil or you can use this ESR Pencil, link in the description, which is another really good low budget purchase compared to an Apple Pencil, but you can use it as a stylus in Mac OS when using Sidecar with your iPad. So I'm going to show you first how to set up your iPad as a monitor with this device. So I've got my HDMI cable going out of the Mac Mini into the capture card and then the capture card is plugged into the iPad and then I launch MoneyCon. And now we boot up the Mac Mini. So the iPad is the only monitor connected to the Mac Mini via the HDMI port. Now we're switching to the MoneyCom app screen on the iPad so you can get a closer look. And basically you don't have to do anything. You just launch the app, it's ready to go. You just gotta plug in your digitizer and there we are. We've logged into Mac OS and the MoneyCon app is gonna give you a 16 by nine window on your iPad. So it's not gonna fill the iPad screen. It looks pretty good, but it doesn't look nearly as good as Sidecar and Sidecar gives you the entire screen to work with, not just a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So we're going to go up to the screen mirroring menu and we're going to select mirror to iPad. You don't want to extend it, you want to mirror it because if you extend it you're going to kind of have two displays going on. You don't want that because the app will count as one display and the iPad will count as another. So you want to have it set to mirror the display. And there you go. You are using your iPad as your main monitor for your Mac Mini and you no longer are using the monitor Moneycom app. It's just being used in this case to log in and switch to Sidecar. And you do need to have your Wi-Fi on and your Bluetooth on to get Sidecar working. You don't have to be on the internet, but you got to have your Wi-Fi network up and running and your iPad on the same Wi-Fi as the Mac Mini. And it has a USB-C power input so you can charge your iPad while you're using it if you want. So another use is to use it as a video recorder. I've got got my Amazon Fire Stick plugged directly into it and I'm not condoning this or saying you should do this but you can it bypasses the DHCP copy protect it records the audio in stereo and you can just simply use QuickTime player to capture a movie or a TV show so in QuickTime, you go up to File and you select New Movie Recording. Once the New Movie window is open, you gotta make sure you select your camera, which is USB 3.0 Capture, and your microphone, USB 3.0 Capture. That is the capture card. And then you wanna select your quality and you wanna select High. High will give you a nice 720p, very portable video file. Whereas if you record at maximum, it records in ProRes and it's gonna be a huge file and it's also gonna be only 20 frames per second. The high setting will give you 60 frames per second and very good quality for like an on the go video. And at the high setting, it's recording in H.264, so you've got a nice compressed file. And the sound's in stereo, the quality's really good. It's 720p, but you know, it's being downscaled from a higher resolution, so it still looks really good when you blow it back up. And the reality is you can also use this to digitize you know, your gaming console and record it directly to your Mac. And of course, this works with OBS as well, and you can have up to 1440p recordings at 30 frames per second. So another use case for this capture card is going out of your little Blackmagic switcher, your ATEM switcher or any video switcher for that matter. And what's cool about it is you can just hit the multicam switch 
And because I'm going out of the HDMI, not the USB of the switcher, I'm able to do this and see my multicam and switch my camera angles. I don't have any other cameras set up here, but you can see I'm going to preview, I can switch like that. And you don't have to record this. You can just open QuickTime, put it in high setting and use it as a display for your switcher. And then you can take the USB out of the switcher as well and record to a hard drive all of your camera angles. Or you can take that out, run that into your Mac and also record directly into OBS. And for another example, I've just got my Nikon D5200 that's plugged into the HDMI output and it's going right into the USB capture card directly into QuickTime. And of course, you could use this for FaceTime calls. You could use it for live streaming. And you know, the quality is going to be better than your typical webcam for this type of situation. So it allows you to use your digital SLR or your mirrorless camera and use it for live streaming even without a switcher. You just want to be set on the high setting, not the maximum. Let's see if I can switch here. So just showing you what it looks like when it's in the maximum setting recording to ProRes with QuickTime. And you can see I don't look smooth. The picture quality looks great, but the frame rate is not what you want. It's recording at 20 frames per second and it looks even more jagged than that really. So you can't really get away with recording ProRes. Maybe if you set your camera to a lower frame rate, it'll smooth it out some. I'm at 60 on my camera. That could be causing the issue. I'm going to try 2398 and see if it improves the stutter. So now I have my camera set to 2398, waving my hands around, doing the jagged head still looks glitchy to me you know it's usable but it's not 2398 so this 22 dollar little usb dongle has a lot of versatility you know there are some limitations but for the money i don't think you can beat it all right thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel give me that thumbs up and i will see you on the next max sound solutions video